Okay, this is Kevin Hardy from Hardy Group. We're at the uh, Nepean Blue Mountains uh, Health District Conference called Together Achieving Better Health, and we're interviewing one of the keynote speakers, uh, David Mates, the Chief Executive of Canterbury and West Coast District Health Boards in New Zealand. So, welcome, David. Thank Thanks you so you much man. for doing this. Um, you've been on a journey around integrated care for quite some time. Um, uh, in terms of what do you wish you knew at the beginning that you know now? Um, I think the, the thing that I yeah, kind of wish most is that actually um, we'd had um, some other Cis health systems that we might have actually learnt a wee bit more from. Okay. Um, some bases of people that have been there and done and delivered a number of uh, major changes. Right. And um, so when we started our journey, it was still very much um, starting right back to the basis of we had lots of really competent, capable people mm -hmm. that actually didn't understand they were part of a health system. Yeah. And um, yeah. and I think part of that was recognising uh, that uh, we had. A, a lot, of, a lot of people, a lot of professional tribes and silos, people trying to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, they just didn't have a common sense of purpose and, um, and a direction of travel. Yeah. And so t I think looking back, that was the most important thing we did, mm -hmm. was actually to focus on getting a shared view yeah. of what a system, uh, a system was. Yeah. By getting that has enabled us to leverage a lot of things um, off that. Yeah. Would, you, would you describe what integrated care means for you? So integrated care, um, you know, through the lens of where we've tried to get to, is really coming from a citizen-centric view of the world, mm -hmm. in terms of health for most people starts and finishes in their own home. And if we're really going to make a difference to the health and well-being of communities, and to change the demand and the pressures that are going to be are occurring across uh, how we define health systems, we needed to start thinking differently about how we yeah. support and enable people to make good and healthy choices. How we support primary and community care to support people to stay well in their own home. And most importantly, to reorientate hospitals to support primary care, to support people support. to stay well and healthy in their own home. And, um, and again, if you're in hospital, that's, you're only there because that's the right place to be, because mm -hmm. there are no other choices or options. Um, yeah. And, and again, care being provided uh, where, where it should be, and in most cases, as close to home as possible. Terrific. Um, with any major organisational change, they obviously go through a series of phases, if you like. So it's almost like building a foundation to start with and then. Did you have a sense of the different phases that you would uh, ideally be going through, or? Did you have a better sense of getting the foundation right and we'll build from there? I think the, the thing that's really, really important, it doesn't matter which, which, which health system no. or, or actually industry, is actually no. getting a shared sense of purpose. Yeah. And we often, continue, we often start transformation journeys or major change, assuming that everyone's yeah, the same board, foundation or on board. Yeah, yeah. And by and large, um, we tend to look to the future with our back face toward, um, mm -hmm. towards it yeah. and try and solve all the problems of the future in the context of the past. All of the crap that we've brought, all mm -hmm. the bad habits we've learned, yeah. all the professional um, uh, learnings and silos and constrained thinking. Mm -hmm. And we try to solve the future in the context of the past. Yeah. And so one of the big challenges is actually getting people focused on to the future and then how to solve the problems of the future in the context of the future, not the yeah. past. Mm -hmm. And that's that's been a really, really important, um, I you know, kind of really important learning for us. Okay. Without that shared sense, the sense of being able to, aware, how can I see myself reflected in the direction of travel, mm -hmm. then I will only ever be able to give a small part of yeah. what I could otherwise, uh, could, could otherwise go. Right. The other bit is actually the importance of focusing on and taking boards yeah. or governance bodies yeah. on the journey. Yeah. They need to own the direction of travel and often we don't pay enough attention to um, enabling and immersing them into st strategy yeah. and to enable the strategy to be theirs. Mm -hmm. um, and so often we go through this complicated dance where governance bodies are actually not really connected or joined up. Mm -hmm. If you haven't got your governance bodies on board, Mm -hmm. then you're always going to have a really fraught, um, yeah, kind of fraught uh, set of circumstances. So how on board was your 
governing body from the beginning? Um, they they realised that they there was they, they had a collective challenge. We were a bit unclear as to what direction and how to how to yeah. go about uh, yeah. doing that. So mm-hmm. we would immersed them back into um, you know, kind of what what was really you know, kind of important. And actually yeah. in health, it is actually about the citizen. It is the individual because mm-hmm. um, actually everything starts and begins uh, around an individual and or their family. Yeah. So how does what you've done in integrated care connect with other systems like housing? employment or education or any of those other um, so major? We've, so we've made health everyone's business. Yeah. Um, when we talk about health, we often self-limit ourselves mm-hmm. to yeah. hospitals or yeah. general practice yeah. or a few other you know, kind of bits and pieces. Yeah. We took the other viewers that actually if we were really going to make a difference, we needed to have all parts of the system mm-hmm. um, feeling as though they were connected to um, making a difference. Yep. So we've got a health and all policies mm-hmm. framework yep. which all our um, councils, local TLAs, yep. environmental um, organisations, mm-hmm. uh, police, yep. MSC and Justice have all um, bought into uh, the, the concept or construct of health and all policies. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about an alcohol um, strategy. Mm-hmm. We have the police, we have the city council, yeah. we have health mm-hmm. um, uh, all lined up and police all lined up with the same strategy Okay. and then basically okay. how do we weave all the different bits together. Yep. So if we're really going okay. to make a difference, um, health can go off and do its thing but it will mm-hmm. only ever be a tiny small part yes. and generally at the, you know, kind of the ambulance at the bottom of the club. Yep. And so what we were sought out deliberately to do is if we were going to change demand we need to change the interactions of all of these other okay. um, entities. Yeah. And the entities we've got no control over, mm-hmm. but part of that was again buying them into a sense of why this mattered to us collectively. And it becomes a partnership in many ways. Yes, it does. You talked to, you've talked several times about citizens, um, and uh, if everyone buys into that partnership about um, the citizens of uh, the region or town or country or whatever else, then. Uh, um, it increases your chances of uh, success and mm. outcomes. Well, well, one of the important things we did right at the beginning with creating a vision of the Canterbury Health System mm-hmm. is we involved thousands of people from the community okay. yeah. in shaping the vision. So often what we, uh, the vision, what, if, what often we do is we just use people in health or in the areas yeah. of specialty to create a vision yeah. that actually impacts on everyone else. Mm-hmm. So again, the thousands of our community were a really important part. It is a community's vision yeah. of their health system. Yeah. And um, so it's not mine, mm-hmm. it's not other individuals, it's actually a collective, collective ownership okay. into that. Okay. And how much of that do you still do now? It's just become an integral part. Um, right. We've got a, a large design uh, mm-hmm. lab, um, okay. big warehouse in the an industrial part of yeah. Christchurch, yeah. and that's the safe place where we do our thinking and designing. And when I say we, it is our community, it's clinicians, mm-hmm. it's um, it's the ambulance service, it's uh, and then revenue, yeah. it's a um, whole range of different organisations yeah. that are um, where we're using different methodologies to enable people to envisage and to con- continue to create a different future, mm-hmm. and then we test them. Yeah, in that amazing. environment Fantastic. and um, yeah. and then we build them if we're doing that in that environment using industrial cardboard or yeah. Um, yeah. or whatever but we use um, anthropologists we've used um, human centered design mm-hmm. in terms of again enabling people to think and and to, to be able to, to to have a vision or a sense of what a diff- of a future could be that's mm-hmm. not anchored in yeah. where they've just come from yes okay mm-hmm. so this would ha- have a impact on the type of leadership that you want. What have you done to grow that? So um, we've invested heavily in, in a number of programs. One of them is uh, what we call an Accelerate program, mm-hmm. where we've had now close to 2,000 uh, clinicians, yeah. uh, doctors, nurses, yeah. allied health yeah. managers, from both primary and secondary care mm-hmm. that have been um, immersed in an pro- in experiential program. Mm-hmm that uh, immerses them into um, environmental organisations, yeah. into yeah. chaos theory and mm-hmm. thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we've worked closely with um, organisations like Air New Zealand um, f- you know, for long periods yeah. of time. Yeah. And again, um, each of the different groups um, are also responsible for delivering a major um, improvement mm-hmm. in the health system. Okay. It's all interdisciplinary, so teams are put together in areas that they've not traditionally 
either know anything about yeah. and people they've, they never knew existed uh, yeah. in the health system. And that's been quite a deliberate uh, construct to okay. actually build a yeah. different language yeah. mm -hmm. across an organisation, across a health system that is actually different from where they came from. Yeah. And um, so, you know, that's an example where we've um, we've done that. We've had night school type um, you know, kind of um, programs, yeah. and that's been part of our participate and collaborate programs. Yeah. Um, and that's that's going to get involved thousands of people, um, yeah. and uh, often in four hour um, slots, yes. and very much about again experiential. How do we enable you to make a better tomorrow? Yeah. And so, very much um, kind of action orientators. Yes. But okay. better than a very clear direction of travel. Mm. Um, so, how do you also um, get buy-in from central agencies and funders for uh, for the, the system? So, in, in the New Zealand context, um, the um, most of the funding comes through, uh, or large parts of funding come through a district health board. Yeah. The challenge with that is, and, and I think it's a mistake that people make, it's not that much different actually from the Australian federal state component. Sure. So right. while primary care funding comes through a district health board, we've got very little ability to shape or influence mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, essentially we're a bank code yeah. uh, with that. Mm -hmm. So what we've had to do is to um, look at how do we engage and connect yep. and um, get um, areas like primary care feeling as though they are part of. Yep. the health system yep. and we often talk about one health system one budget mm -hmm. and in Canterbury in reality we're neither yeah. but it is a rhetoric yeah. and it's a behavior now that has actually so, demonstrated yeah, people now that, function yeah. as one health system mm -hmm. and with one budget yeah. but again we've got the same multiple different funding streams multiple different sure. uh, contracts that exist in, in, in all health systems of course I think the um, what we've gone about implementing actually has been very clear government uh, direction. Mm -hmm. um, how that has been implemented and interpreted in different parts of the country has, has yeah. been a wee bit different. Yeah, completely. So what does the next five years hold in this space? So we, we've delivered some quite remarkable outcomes mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I think what's, um, what we're now able to demonstrate is sustainable change now over 10 plus years yeah. and the outcomes are very, very different. Yep. But also, we're at a, a point too where we need to take another really big step yep. if we're going to continue to meet the needs of the okay. future. Yes. And I think one of the you know, kind of the amazing parts about health systems is the day you ever think you're there, you're in terminal decline. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, it, it is a journey. Yeah. Uh, what is um, what is really world leading edge today? In some parts, sure. it's going to be ordinary tomorrow. Yes. What's broken today yeah. actually might be an exemplar tomorrow. Yeah. And again, it is this this you know, kind of continual. Um, your yeah, kind of focus of how to make it better tomorrow, regardless of what it is. Yeah. Um, and yeah. by keeping that relentless focus, um, we will make it better tomorrow yeah. and the next day. Yeah. Fantastic. So you've been leading this for some time. How do you maintain your passion? How do you nurture yourself to um, maintain that um, sense of commitment and vision? And, uh, I guess energy to continue doing what you're doing. Um, a number of different ways. Um, one is I've, I've been very lucky with the, you know, kind of some you know, kind of great mentors, sure. um, you know, kind of um, yeah. over the years. Um, but again, we've continued to look uh, create an organisation that is curious. Mm -hmm. That is curious about what's happening mm -hmm. in not just health, but lots of other industries and sectors. Yeah. Um, so we're not constraining our thinking mm -hmm. just to health, mm -hmm. and a lot of our learnings. Are really coming from um, yeah, kind of other sectors and other yeah. industries. Yeah. So I guess part of that curiosity, continuing to be excited and um, and continuing to learn from other areas, is part of keeping the passion yeah. uh, going. Yeah. The other bit is we've not had the easiest journey, mm -hmm. um, but part of that is actually staying relentlessly focused on making it better for the citizen, the person in front of us, yeah. and actually making it better for those that actually work within health. And every day at work, I learned something that we're doing yeah. that I did not know we were yeah, doing. No, no. And generally speaking, it's so seriously cool. Yeah. And so part of that, I get a lot of, uh, you know, kind of a lot of enjoyment yeah. uh, from actually just seeing people uh, that have been empowered to do the right thing, anchored in the direction of travel, that are not seeking permission to do the right thing. Yeah, well, and those, those things there, um, that's a great way of getting and continuing to remain energised. Yes. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. David, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for providing the time. Uh, I 
really appreciate it. So, great no to problem. see you. Lovely to see you, Kevin. You too. Take care.